Hello everyone. Good evening. This is February the 9th and this um, I'm Dina and I'm back with an update on a whip that I've been working on for the last three days. Um, this is my memorabilia, my sleeping beauty that I've been working on. And if I have a picture, I'll insert it um, as to where I was. So let me show you uh, how far I've gotten. Here we are. I finished that skin. Yay! <laughs> it took an entire day of my rotation to finish just that lightest portion of her arm. One over one is a, a bit of a time commitment, but I just think it's lovely. Just lovely. So I was pleased with that, and then as I had mentioned, I picked a, a 10 by 10 block, this row right here, this that goes across, and I decided I was going to fill that in and move all the way across on that piece. Now, you'll see that some of it I went below because I was just using up the end of that thread. I hated to cut it when it was just, I could see a continuation on down the piece, but my goal was to make sure I got at least to here as I marched across the piece. And I was able to continue going along um, quite a bit to her skirt. And you'll notice when you get to that part of her skirt where I stop, the block isn't completely done. However, that was a huge color change. And so I decided that was a good place to stop. It was easy enough to mark my pattern. And so I'm gonna back up now and give you a sort of an overview of uh, Sleeping Beauty. There she is. And I think that I'm just over uh, halfway across on that row that I'm trying to traverse over to the uh, other side. So hopefully in my next um, rotation, if, if I have good stitching time, hopefully I'll be able to go all the way across from the skirt here on over to the other side. That's a huge amount to bite off, but I did get a lot done this time considering the skin. Love this piece, absolutely love it. Um, I'm enjoying it very, very much. Thanks for watching and, and following along with me as I work on my year of whips. Hello everyone, Dina here on Sunday, February the 12th, just to show you a new start and a finish. I wanted to do another part of my um, 4th of July ornaments for my ornament tree and my entryway there. So um, last time I stitched out of a magazine and had a finish and uh, the name of that pattern was For Old Glory. And then this weekend, I had a start and a finish as well. This is the pattern that I chose to do. It's called Fourth of July Bird. This is July 4th right there on the little bird. And it's from Heart and Hand. And it's a, a kind of an oblong piece. It's a different shape. And I did uh, work on that and finish it this weekend but I did make a change. You'll notice right here, that is a button. It's a little flag button. And I didn't want to have to order a button because I am doing stitch from stash. I noticed on this pattern, there are stars. There are different types of stars. There are cross stitch stars. And then there are some stars that are made a little bit different, the little wonky stars. They're Carolina's stars. Anyway, I had never made those before, so now I knew I know a new specialty stitch. 
Yes, I love that. But I looked through my buttons that I had here at home, just in my stash, and I found that I had stars. And I had a sparkly star. I actually had them in two sizes, and I chose the smaller of the two sizes. I thought it fit better the proportion of the ornament. So this is my finish, my July 4th bird. And I, you can see where I substituted the little gold sparkly star um, instead of the little flag because I didn't have one. And actually, I like it really well. I've never been very brave about changing things on my own. I'm always afraid it won't look as nice. Um, but in this case, I think it looks just fine. And I was happy, happy with it. Hello everyone, Dina back again. This is the 15th of February and that means I have an update to share with you. This was the Nativity by Teresa Wentzler. So if I have a picture, I'll insert it here. Let me show you what I've done on this rotation. I was able to spend three days on it this time. And I'm very pleased with the uh, progress with it. So I've come on down and get as close as I can. I've come on down in the wing and I finished the wing to the end of the page break. And then I started working on the robes. The wing was quite a challenge for me. A lot of blended threads that are so close. I think that was okay for three days, and I am I worked on it um, pretty hard last night. I had time just off and on during the day to work on it, and um, that's my progress so far on the nativity, and it'll go uh, back uh, now in the whip pile until the next rotation, and I'll be pulling out Bewitched and be working on something that looks amethyst. Uh, I am going to do something a little different for part of this video, and I had been hinting at it that I was going to take a page out of uh, Simply in Stitches from Tina about doing different crafts and, and different things that she likes to do on her stay vacation. And since my husband's going to be hiking and camping and I'm going to have all my evenings free, it looks to me almost like a vacation, like I'm home, you know, here for many, many hours that I won't be um, feeling like I need, you know, to pay attention to someone else and take care of, of uh, meals and things like that on a more formal basis. So I'm going to grab that time and I'm going to do a few things. So one of the things I'm going to show you um, is a video that I, I made, just a short one. Uh, where I made a bag for my husband to take with him camping. So uh, that'll show you a little bit of sewing. And then I'm going to completely clean out my sewing room. Yes, my craft room. It's a mess. Um, it's just slowly over time, you know how things do. You, you work on something and you go to put it up and you put it in the closet, but maybe not where you originally had it, just where there's a space. And then the next thing you pull out creates a different space. And so when you go to put something else in, you put that in a different space. And over time, it gets a little disorganized. Everything's there. I can find it. It's just not the way I like it. It's not neat. It's not all put together. So that is something I'm going to be doing this week and at the end of the whole process. I'll put a little footage in here for you to go on the journey with me. Today I wanted to show you something that I just did uh, for my husband for his trip. When hikers are serious about their uh, uh, hiking, <laughs> they are worried about weight. And so they want everything to be very, very light and be multi-purpose. Uh, so that they can use things in many different ways and not have to carry so much um, materials with them. So my husband has this bag and this is just a uh, little drawstring bag and it's, um, it's got a slick side here 
on the inside it's more of a fuzzy softer almost like a flannel but not quite that heavy anyway this bag he carries things in and puts it in down in his backpack and at night when he gets to his uh, campsite and sets up his tent he takes this the things out of here to use and then he fills this back up with his jacket his um, clothing things that are soft but he packs it full and it becomes his pillow the problem he's found with it is that this material that's slick is not comfortable it sticks to your skin and the material on the inside if you turned it inside out is fuzzy and it's hot so he brought this to me yesterday and said is there any way you could make me a bag just like this the same size with a drawstring he said I just want it big enough to stuff my clothes in to use as a pillow at night but I want it out of 100% cotton something that won't make me sweat so I said, okay, I'll try that. So we looked around at pillowcases, and the pillowcases that I had in my stash to cross-stitch pretty designs on were 50% cotton, 50% um, polyester. So that wasn't going to work. So he went and looked in his closet, and he came up with a T-shirt. And um, this is the remnant of the T-shirt. This was a t-shirt he got uh, when he ran on a um, team for a local physician in town, a vein specialist, and they had they were participating in a charity event to raise money for cancer research. And um, so everybody who ran on their team got this t-shirt. Well, my husband has several of these through the years. So he sacrificed this one. He brought it to me and he said, I want a bag made out of this nice cotton, but without all the writing on it. So I had writing on the back as well. Better veins for life. I cut the t-shirt off and it was too wide, but I used this bag as a guide and I made him a new bag. I just simply stitched down the shirt till I got it the width I wanted and I closed up a seam on the bottom and then at the top I made the top actually the bottom of the shirt where the hem was and I took the hem if you can see this what well, was the shirt hem because it's nicely um, hemmed and the stitches are really nice and strong and I folded it over for my casing for my cording because it was already it didn't have a raw edge it was already nice and smooth so I, I turned that over and sewed the casing and ran a shoestring through for his drawstring so here's his new bag same size pretty much exactly the same size um, tried to get it as close to it as I could the only thing it doesn't have is a round bottom but it's about the same size bag but now it's nice and soft. It's a t-shirt material, so it feels great, you know, to your skin. And doesn't get hot, you don't sweat against it. And so, and it's light, lightweight. It actually weighs less than this double-sided one here. So he was pretty excited about that. And uh, I was happy that I could do it for him. So I do sew just a little bit, and that was one of the things I was able to do for him. And so this sort of kicks off my craft vacation, Tina. <laughs> this is my first project that I wanted to share with y'all. So thank you for watching it, and I hope that it inspires you to be crafty and creative and um, repurpose things around your home, like this t-shirt. <laughs> you guys have a happy day today. Have a great day stitching or crafting in any craft that you're working on, um, and I will talk to you uh, tomorrow. Hello everyone, this is Dina. I'm back again to share with you a finish and also a fully finished object that happens to be the first time I've ever framed anything myself. I have a um, sweet opportunity to go to a baby shower tonight 
and the young couple that are having this baby, it's their first baby, are in our church, and they mean a lot to me. Um, very sweet, sweet people. And I wanted to give them something very special. And I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to get it done in time. I knew I couldn't get it framed in time. Um, I got the pattern from uh, Linda Gilliam's uh, Very Best for Baby. It's a collection of her um, patterns. And the one I'm going to do, or did actually, is this one right here. And they've made it into a pillow, but I didn't have time to go shopping for fabric or anything like that. So I just framed it and figured they could hang it on the wall. And just in case you couldn't see it, because it's, the lettering in here is in a teal blue. It says, Now I lay me down to rest. Angels guard me in my nest. Heavenly Father, care for me like the wee birds in the tree. Glad and well may I awake, and this I ask for Jesus' sake. So, I've got that done. Did it just on simple Ada with DMC that I had in my stash. Whipped it out as fast as I could. And then I've just framed it in a picture frame. So here it is. Isn't that precious? That little baby in that nest. That little angel bear <laughs> looking out over him. I just think that's precious. I hope they'll like it. Um, I had to do a quick video of it because I'm going to be wrapping it here in a moment. Uh, the shower is tonight. <laughs> so Nothing like uh, taking it right up to the wire, is there? But anyway, I have another finish and just in time, and it's a very special one. So thank you for sharing it with me, and uh, I'll let you know how they like it. In the meantime, you guys have a uh, happy stitching. Bye. Good morning, everyone. This is Dina. I'm back with the um, video of the hard work I put in yesterday to straighten up my craft room. I worked all day on it. <laughs> I want to take you through uh, several of the things that I worked on and what I did yesterday. Um, and I am so excited to have gotten it finished because today I have to be stitching in uh, the color purple for a sal. So I've got my um, project ready on Bewitched and I'll be starting that in a few minutes. But I wanted to take you through um, everything that I worked on yesterday. Anyway, it was a great day. It was very productive and I feel good about the results. And now my stitching room feels clean and organized and I can sit down and stitch without being distracted, you know, thinking, oh, I need to go do this, or I need to go pick that up, or I wish I could, you know, put my hands on this right away. So um, I wanted to share that with you. So this is the end result of my first day of activities while I um, have the time alone. So um, I'll turn the camera around now and I'll show you my room. So here's the craft room. And this is the uh, counter top storage unit that I mentioned um, that the cabinet maker uh, wanted to experiment and, and make a piece of furniture and I thoroughly enjoy it. It's on wheels so I can move it around and I, at times when I've worked on big projects like quilts I've moved it up right on the other side of this desk right here butted them together and it gives me this huge work surface. So it's fluid and I really, I really like that. So what I would like to share with you though is uh, a little bit about uh, the purpose of this. This is to store my um, utensils and tools and things of that nature so I can get to them as I need them. Well, one of the things, as you can see, there's a project lined up, ready to go, a couple of them, a framing project that I'm going to do for my son. I'll share that picture with you when I, I'm working on that. I'm going to use this new tool. It's point driver. Haven't used one before. Had ordered it after watching someone on Floss to you enablers. And, <laughs> and now I'm going to try to frame uh, using a point tool, a point driver. And then I've got a couple of needle minders in the making here. I've, I've, I've clipped off the little hoops that were at the top of each of them and, and filed them down. My husband helped me file them down. 
And so I have a little castle with a dragon hanging on it and a pretty owl that I'm going to make uh, this week during my little project week. So this is my um, storage cabinet. And I'll give you a little idea of what's in here. Pardon the movement. Hope I don't make you seasick. Um, I do sew a little, as I said. Here's my collection of threads and um, sewing needles and things for my sewing machine. And that's at the top there. And then here is the what I would consider my um, glue and finishing type stuff. There's my um, different types of glues, my uh, ultra weave, my little... Um, boards that you mount your cross stitch on my rotary cutter and Vana look what I bought go watch Vana's tutorial on making your own cording I have it ready to go as soon as I take my class I'll be able to do that <laughs> then I have some tools my actual tools to, for taking care of things around here in the room um, Oh, and my jewelry making, what little bit I do are scissor bobs. So I have that in there. And then this is my collection of Q-snaps. I have a few. I do prefer them. And I had those long before I had my floor stand. So that's, that's that. Okay. This is my dress form, which I don't hardly ever use anymore. I, I have a dress covering it right now. And my gift wrap station and then you see my my working spot there's my stitchy spot <laughs> I have sewing patterns in these drawers here and there's my project uh, storage that's each of those has a, a whip in it and there's my cart everybody loves their cart <laughs> And I have mine as well. I've got my beads and my specialty threads in there, my needle minders, and then I've got things that I use on a regular basis, my Oort jar to keep you in stitches. My sister gave me that. I thought it was so cute. And then I guess you can check out my closet. This is where I spent a lot of time yesterday because it's the bulk of my storage. I'll give you an idea of my closet. This is a bedroom and I've, I've commandeered it, um, you know, for my sewing room because we don't need it. Um, so that's why I have so much space. This is the biggest space I've ever had before. But um, anyway, my mom... My mom, when she passed away, I inherited her stash, her sewing machine and a lot of her tools and, and things. And one of the things she had were buttons. And she had them stored in a um, little plastic cylinders that uh, she had repurposed. They were cylinders where you uh, would have powdered drinks like um, lemonade or orange juice. And um, she put hers in, a, in color coordinated efforts <laughs> in there and so what I did yesterday I spent several hours doing this but it was important to me um, I went through and I put groupings together you know buttons that were paired together uh, so that I could easily see oh I have five of these or three of these you know whatever but this is how I store my buttons if you can see it it's a container that guys use a lot of guys use in their shops for screws and nuts and bolts and things like that and I have buttons in mine and then in the bigger ones I have zippers and and uh, elastic and velcro and things like that but it's important to be able to find my buttons because I just recently finished a fourth of July piece and I needed a button and I was looking through my buttons to find something to put on that piece and realized I needed a better system. So I spent a little time doing that yesterday. It looks very small, but it took an awful lot of time. So I'm, I'm pleased that that's finished. So I'll walk you through my closet real quick. I've got sewing fabric and projects up top. And 
then it transitions to gift wrap. I have bows color coordinated and, and stored in Christmas boxes kind of up at the top. And so when I get ready to start wrapping, I have everything I need uh, up here. And then on the next shelf starts the cross stitch. In the far corner are baby items, baby items to stitch. And in that next section, um, that's this whole section here, baby, baby stuff. Then these are items to stitch on that aren't fabric, as in cross stitch fabric. You know, here's a sweater, uh, uh, that's a sweatshirt, and then I've got all sorts of towels, hand towels and huck towels and, you know, things there to stitch on. This box is really important to me because, oops, messed that up a bit, didn't I? Um, because this box is all of my projects I want to do in the near future with the fabric, if I've already bought the fabric with them, and the pattern. So they haven't been kitted yet, they've just been paired with fabric. But that's what's in this box. So when I'm looking for my next new start, this is where I will go once I finish my, my um, whips. This is my fabric storage box. It's got um, special paper in it, you know, acid-free paper to wrap all the fabric in, and they, it lays flat. All the fabric is flat, and so that's my stash of fabric there. This is my magazine storage right here. They're on these little things. I'll show you one. I put one up here so I could show you. They're on these little magazine holders. This little piece right here slips in the middle of your magazine where the seam is. And these are three ring binder holes. And so they just go in here um, in the book. And here they are. Just I can flip through them like a magazine. Okay, uh, over to the right of my magazine storage are my books that I have that are both cross stitch and Christmas decorations. So that's all on that shelf. Moving down over in this back corner, it's hard to see because of the uh, little bit of shadowing back there. In the very back corner are some boxes that include trimming, uh, finishing you know, work, and um, little empty frames, things that I can use for finishing. Then in this long box here, on top, you'll see that I have some of my scroll rods in there. I have an older project bag. It's sort of a predecessor to a project bag. I may take that out and share that with you one day. Um, and then in the box below it are all of my Ada fabrics. That was my first fabric stash. So those are Ada pieces. And there's my complete set of DMC and my mom's boxes on top. It was a small sampler set uh, years ago. DMC actually sold a sampler set. There's the list of all the numbers and um, there's a tiny bobbins worth not a full skein even, just a sampling of each of the colors that they had at that time. It's been a long time ago, but I kept it. It was my mom's, it's sentimental to me. And on occasion when I'm completely out of a color and I need a few stitches to finish, I'll take some off of that little bobbin and finish it. <laughs> it keeps me from having to run to the store real quick and I can just put my number that I need on my shopping list for the next trip. Then I have a few things uh, here that um, are, one box is my coloring uh, books and pencils that I've gotten, and the bottom uh, box is just a project that doesn't fit in my rolling cart. I've outgrown the cart. So I had one uh, leftover that I had to put in here. Okay, the final shelf here for you are my baskets. I've got a basket of projects that I'm beginning to kit. I've got a basket of current whips over here. There's the, my travel bag. I've done a video on that before. And then in the middle here are all of my just everyday office supplies, things that 
I might need trash bags, um, pencil erasers to top my pencils, or in, in one case here, there's my petite treasure bay, braid color guide, and also my um, DNC color guide. On the bottom are the rest of my sewing patterns and my my um, suitcase that I take on to my crafting um, retreats and my mom's sewing machine, which I have um, inherited and plan on you know keeping for a while. So that's my craft closet, and here you see the Ziploc bags, the large ones. Those. Are my fallback for my project bags because I don't have enough of the cloth ones made you know to take care of everything but that is my um, biggest portion of my storage so I hope you've enjoyed the tour and I'm very pleased with how everything has turned out and um, I thank you for letting me share it with you it was a hard day's work <laughs>
and they have to dry for 24 hours and I'm trying to keep them apart so that they don't uh, get attracted to each other. <laughs> and I have them on this uh, just old notebook paper here as a protection for my countertop so I don't get glue on it. So this is one of my projects for today and um, I will be working on it uh, for a little while. So the next thing I'm going to work on is going to be filming um, me learning how to use this point driver. So will you back up here? Hello again. <laughs> I'm going to be trying to learn how to use this point driver and uh, trying to film a I mean, um, I'll try to film a little bit of the process of me uh, framing my son's picture. Okay. Hi. I'm back. It's hard to get the work surface and me in the picture at the same time, but this is what I want you to see. So that's what we're focusing on today. So I had mentioned that I had a new tool, my point driver, and I have opened it up. I read the instructions about how to work it and how to load it, whatnot. So now I am ready to try my hand at framing this piece. So it's all loaded and ready to go. So now to get the frame ready. This is the frame that we got at our local thrift shop for four dollars. It came with the glass and with a double mat and an actual old picture in it which we've taken out. So this morning I've used my glass cleaner my, um, that's uh, a natural certified natural product but anyway this is what I've used to clean the glass with and it worked really well because I, um, I put a dab on my paper towel here, a little squirt of it, and I rubbed it really hard over the um, price sticker that was stuck to the front to get it nice and wet, and I was able to peel it off pretty well. And then I just cleaned the glass. So we're going to insert the glass into the frame again and get that going. I always hate to work with glass. It makes me very nervous. But we got it. There. Okay. Glass is in the frame. As you can see, we had to tear the, the back off of this to get it out. But this is my son's piece of work here. I wanted to show it to you. This is a cityscape that he's done. It's a black piece of board that he used as his background. And he actually did the cityscape in the white. The material that he used were address labels that you put in your computer to print out address labels. So this is all made out of little cuts of address labels. And you have a cityscape. So he has put it in the mats already. He has them taped down. So now all I have to do is place it in the frame. And it fits beautifully. I'm very excited about that. Now, one of the things that doesn't fit are these wire holders. You know, they are at the wrong place. So I'll uh, have to get my pliers out and try to get those off. 
uh, before while I'm here. But in the meantime, this was the picture that was originally in this frame. Just an old picture uh, talks about being a girl. And I'm going to use it as my backing piece to hold everything in. So now the next thing I have to do, get that nice and stable there on the desktop, is to use my point driver. Now the instructions say that you're to go about three inches from the corners, and then you are to do about six inches apart. So I am not sure how this works, but we're going to find out. So I don't know how loud this is going to be. I haven't done it. This is my first one. So we're going to pull the trigger. Oh. Well, I missed it. It has to be lower than that. How interesting. All right, let me take this out. Let's see if it has to be this. Hmm. How interesting. You would think that has to sit on the wood. Okay. Let's try again. We have a point. <laughs> oh, that's exciting. Okay, let's try another one. We have another point. <laughs> okay, we'll just work our way around, won't we? Here we go. Now look at that. How strange. That's better. I'm going to rotate this around. Okay, what I did next after I drove the points in, because I wanted this nice, smooth, clean back, is I took my little screwdriver here, my flat head screwdriver, and I just popped these things up, and I put this backing piece in, and now I'm going to press down the point drivers to hold the piece in. There is the cityscape that my son did with address labels, and it is fully framed. It is an FFO. <laughs> I think it's a very lovely picture. 
There you go. Now you can see the whole thing. $4 frame from the thrift store. It's our, our local Goodwill. And a picture done by my son. Framed by his mom. <laughs> this was one of the projects I wanted to get done today. So, yay. <laughs> now, if my needle minders will just dry in the next 24 hours, I'll be good to go today. You guys have a great day today, whatever craft you're doing. I'm going to go back to stitching on my Bewitched, and I will talk to you later. Bye. Good morning, everyone. Dana here on Sunday, February the 19th. I hope you're enjoying this video with um, a little bit of extra footage in here from other things that I've been working on this month. Um, it's a little different to add that in and I thank Tina from Simply In Stitches for the idea. Today though is just the swap out day from my whip that I've been working on and I would be starting a new whip today. And even though I've been participating in two sows with this whip uh, during my rotation, um, that first of all, Stitch Mania's uh, Amethyst, and then Stitch from Stash's Color Purple. Uh, it still fell within those three days of my rotation because of my planning method that you saw last time. So <clears throat> I want to show you the progress I made on Bewitching. And uh, here's the pattern, just to remind you the what we're working on here, the little girl in the middle. And I still have this on my scroll frame. I'm not going to take it off, so I'll just share it with you here. This is the progress we've made. And I will say the um, first sale for Amethyst, I came over here. I had part of this ribbon, probably till about right here. And I went ahead and finished um, the ribbon down to here. I can't go much lower than that right now because that's where my uh, bar is on my scroll frame. So I kind of stopped right there. And then I came over to the dress and started up here. And then for the color purple um, from Stitch from Stash, I just continued that same idea. And I came all the way down into the dress and got as far as I could get uh, with the purple. And then the rest of my uh, time, I had a day in between those two sows that I worked on the, the little jacket that she's wearing. And I got some of that done. So we've made a little bit of progress here in the middle of the picture. So the next time that I pick this up, I will probably start at the top here and start working my way down over here so that I can you know, start going across on an even um, row and then get to the bottom together and then I can roll everything up. But that's where we are on Bewitching and that's what I've been working on for the last three days. I just think she's coming along nicely and I'm loving these crazy colors. I just think they're great. Not, not necessarily all traditional Halloween colors, but I really like it. Okay, so that's what I have for you this morning. Um, oh, I do have a, just a bit of news. Set that down. Remember, I had run out of a color. I have it now. <laughs> My blue corn. So when that comes up for rotation again, I know I can finish that house. So when this came in, I was so tempted just to go grab that piece and finish the house anyway. But I won't. I'll just wait and do it when it's time. I'm planning on taking it with me um, for a weekend uh, meetup that uh, we're having in Atlanta coming up very soon, and um, I'm already planning what to take. So I went through my uh, calendar where I have all of my uh, projected uh, schedule there for what whip I'm going to work on each day, and I rearranged some of it, which is why I like it fluid. Um, I found, found that I was going to the meetup and I thought, 
I'm going to want to talk and visit. I don't want to take a big piece that's really intricate and hard to follow that has my working copy, you know, really big. I've, I've talked about that before. So I've picked out a couple of uh, my whips, my 12 Days of Christmas and my Four Freedoms. And then I also thought about um, one of my 4th of July ornaments. I could start a new one. And um, so I'm kind of planning that ahead, and I rearranged the west, the rest of my month, um, moved around Smoky Mountain Christmas and a couple of others to make sure that I had my simpler patterns to take with me for the weekend. So it won't be long before I'll start planning the month of March because I get to go on a stitching retreat in March, and I'm excited about that. I get to meet Vana and I get to take classes from her and um, I want to plan what pieces I want to take with me there so that planning month will be very interesting I really appreciate the comments that I've been getting on my last video where I did share my planning uh, for my rotation and um, it's been great thank y'all for being so positive about something that I was afraid might be a bit boring to you, but um, I wanted to respond to the uh, lady who asked me to talk about it, and I appreciate the rest of you coming along for that. I, uh, I've enjoyed doing it for you, and I hope that you may have gotten a, a piece or two of it that might help you in some of your comments. You're making suggestions back to me about what you do that's that's similar or slightly different, and I'm taking notes. <laughs> I always want to improve my processes, so uh, thank you for doing that. Thank you for taking the time to comment, and as always, thank you for watching. I really do uh, look forward to hearing from each of you. It's like a conversation, so it's, it's wonderful. I hope you have a great week. I will be stitching this week, and I may be doing some other crafting if uh, I get a chance. But I only have today and tomorrow uh, on my time that's my uninterrupted time that I get to do special projects uh, without inconveniencing other people. So I've enjoyed it and I hope you have. Have a great week. Get a lot of stitching done. Enjoy it. Love what you're doing. Bye. Good morning, everyone. Today is the 22nd of February. It is a Tuesday, and I am rotating to my next whip. So I'm going to give you a, just a brief update on how I'm coming. Uh, I've been working on Smoky Mountain Christmas. That was the whip I just worked on the last three days. And I'll Think I'm going to pause the camera and turn it around so I can show it to you a little bit up close because it's getting so big it's hard for me to get it in the frame and um, I did a lot of back stitching and really the pictures beginning to take shape and I wanted to share that with you so I'm going to turn the camera around show you my progress on this piece and then that'll be the end of this little segment um, so I hope that you guys will have great stitching the rest of the week. I'll be moving on to my next whip. Here's the whip. Here's my Smoky Mountain Christmas. You can see that I've gotten further on the um, tree a little bit up at the top. Before I had stitched all the way across and just a little bit of the tree, maybe a couple of colors in the tree, but I hadn't done any of the back stitching. So let's go up a little closer. I'll show you what I've done. I had stopped back stitching with these bears. I had part of the bear done. Um, I had this whole bear done and this wreath done. So I had to start with this ribbon and I back stitched both ribbons. I really like those. They pop so pretty now. I had to back stitch this wreath and the back end of the bear and then the strap I had to back stitch and all across. So I started in here on this bear with the back stitching. And all of those white spots are where the uh, white beads are going to go for the snow. 
And then I came on over here and I started back stitching Santa and he has a face. Doesn't he have the sweetest face? He's so sweet looking at that puppy. And then the back stitching of the jacket. I had back stitched a tiny bit, I think, of the sleeve when I did the puppy a while back. So I had to start with Santa's head and come all the way down his coat. And I must say, back stitching this coat was extremely time consuming, but so well worth it. Oh, the detail on the coat is really popping out now. And I've got most of the coat done. Um, I did backstitch the little lamb over here that, in the black and made the bell pull for it and the little legs on the lamb. I don't know if you can see those, if it'll focus. But they're little tiny black legs right here. And I backstitched the horse's mane and his tail because that was in black as well. I did that when I did the bears. So now I've moved over and you can see I've begun back stitching these straps that come across and um, got most of that done. So now I'm about right here with the back stitching, but that caught up to where I was stitching. So I stopped there and I came back up to this tree. And when I last um, showed you my progress, I only had two colors in the tree. So now I've stitched uh, the brown, all the browns in the tree and I've begun stitching the green that lays over the tree. And I did the back stitching in the tree as well. So we're, we're getting there. So looking at the pattern compared to what I'm working on. Oops, sorry, glare. Move that out of the way. Looking at this pattern, you can see where I'm at. I am right in here with the tree and in the sleigh, you can see the little lamb. I'm starting to move just past there, so I'll right at that point. So I'm thinking I'm a, a good two-thirds done. I think that would be a fair estimate. So I'm, I'm well over halfway now. I'm very excited about that. And to have gotten the back stitching um, caught up was just a huge weight off of me because I knew there was so much of it to do. And I'm just grateful that I was able to get it done this rotation. I just decided I was going to stitch at least one of the three days I had scheduled for this whip as a back stitching day. And as it turned out, I did two full days of back stitching before I ever started cross stitching on the tree. So there you have it. Smoky Mountain Christmas. Thanks for watching today. And I hope you get a lot done the rest of the week. Talk to you soon. Bye.